In this lesson, we're going to consider the difference between displacement and total distance. Let's first consider the star right here and what happens when the star moves all the way to the end here up to 25 and back to 5. If we're talking about displacement, we're really just considering what was its change in position. So displacement is the same thing as the change in position, and this star, in fact, only changed in position by 5 units, 5 units to the right. But if we're considering total distance, we know that the star started here at 0, went all the way 25 units this way, and back 20 units this way, so the total distance that the star traveled was 45 units. All right, so let's try this out with some um, problems dealing with our particles, much like our star that move along a line. And in this case, we're given the function v of t equals t squared minus t minus 6. And we're asked to find the displacement or the change in position. Now you'll recall from before we learned that the integral of a velocity function gives change in position. So that's good. So in this case, we're interested in what happens between 1 and 4 seconds. So we're going to take the integral from 1 to 4 of this function, which was named v of t dt. And now we can just go over here in our calculator and give this a go. So we're going to um, choose our integral function, and we're going to throw in x squared minus x minus 6 comma x comma 1, comma 4. There we go. And we got negative 4.5. That means it moved the particle ended up 4.5 units to the left. All right. Now in our next problem, we're going to be asked here for the total distance. And if we're interested in total distance, then we're also interested, did this particle ever change direction? So let's set the velocity to zero and see, did we ever have a time when it changed direction? Well, this looks factorable, so let's give that a go. We've got t minus 3 and t plus 2. So we get two places where this equals zero. But recall, um, same time period, that was the time period from 1 to 4, and only 3 is between 1 and 4. So if we consider our velocity between 1 and 4, and we know we changed direction at 3, we can consider numbers between 1 and 3, and we see that we have a negative times a positive. So this would be negative. And here, numbers greater than 3 would make both of them positive. And so our particle was first moving to the left, and then it was moving to the right. So it did indeed change direction. So one way we could deal with this is we could say, well, we've got to take the integral from 1 to 3 of my velocity, and I'm going to want to change the sign on that, or just take the absolute value so it becomes positive. And to that, I can add the integral from 3 to 4 of v of t dt. And that will get us the correct answer. So if I do second enter, here was my function, right? Same integral as before, but first I want to do it from 1 to 3. And there's my answer for the first part. But remember, we were taking the absolute value of it. So I've got 7.3 repeating plus, now let's do the part from um, 3 to 4. So from 3, oops, let's try that again. So comma, 3, comma, 4, press enter. And we've got um, 2.8. 3 repeating. So if I add to that 7 point, turns out if you put a whole bunch of 3s, it'll know that you meant 3 repeating. Press enter. And there we go. We get 10.16 repeating. All right. Now, it turns out there's actually an easier way, and that would have been to just take the absolute value of the velocity function. So the other way to do this is we could just do the integral all the way from 1 to 4, 
but keep my velocity always positive. And that should get the same answer, so let's try that out. So second, actually we're going to do this one from scratch. So math, 9 for our integral, and now we're going to take math and go and grab absolute value. So the absolute value of my velocity function, which is x squared minus x minus 6, close the parentheses on that, comma, x, comma, 1, comma, 4. And there we go. There's the same answer, 10.16 repeating was the total distance traveled. All right, so now let's look at this next one. This time we have a velocity function in meters per second, and it's moving along a line, and here it is, e to the negative t cosine t, and our interval is from 0 to 4 this time. And we're asked, how far is the particle from where it started? When we read that, we should recognize that this is going to be displacement. And all I need to do here is take the integral from 0 to 4 of this velocity function. Um, let's put this one into our y equals this time, just to show another way to do this. So second, e to the negative t. And we want to multiply that times cosine of t. Okay, so I've got it in my y equals. So let's just get our integral. So math 9, and we're going to go vars, y vars function y1, comma x, comma 0, comma 4. All right, so there we go. 0.499 is how far the particle is from where it started. All right, now it asks this time, how far did the particle move? That tells me I'm looking for total distance. And when I'm looking for total distance, now I want the integral from 0 to 4, but I want to take the absolute value of velocity. We're going to do this the shorter way this time. So now I can take that same thing, and I can insert over here absolute value. So right in front of that y1, oops, there we go, I'm going to insert my absolute value. There it is, ABS, and I'll need a parenthesis inserted after the Y1. So there we go. Now it's the absolute value of Y1 with respect to X from 0 to 4. By the way, if the numbers come out the same, it means it didn't change direction. But it turns out we travel a lot farther um, than um, our distance displacement, which means we must have gone right and left. All right, our last question in this talks about if the particle's initial position was at 5, where is it at 4 seconds? All right, so this is one of these ones where we want to consider our starting position, and to that we add our change in position. Our starting position is 5. And whenever we want a change in position, we simply take the integral of our rate. And we figured out this value. Let's just go back and find it. There it was, 0.499. So I started in position 5. My change in position was 0.499, which means at the end of 4 seconds, my new position is 5.499. All right, that's it.